Welcome again to the session, everybody. As I said in the community, we will be talking about building um, influence. And this is not the first time that I am teaching on building influence um, in this community uh, because one of the most important skills in this dispensation and uh, in the next decades to come is the ability to build influence, manage influence, and possibly use that influence to create impact or to make money. If you are intentional at becoming somebody who will create significant impact, you are intentional at becoming somebody who will create wealth in your model, in your model of, in your impact building model, in your business building model, one of the most important elements that you have to fit in that model is influence. And influence has a strong relationship to do with attention, right? And I even have a book on building attention, managing attention and monetizing attention, especially leveraging on social media platforms. So if you are going to succeed in at whatever level you're listening to me right now, whether you are just starting, you are in the middle, you are in the growth stage, you are the saturation stage, whatever level, village, urban area, in a big city, in a developing country, in a developed country, whatever area you are right now, if you are serious at what you're trying to build as career vision or business vision, you need to be intentional at understanding what is influence and how do I build this influence and how do I use it as an asset? Because influence is asset. How do I use it as an asset to be able to do more, to create more impact and to make more money, right? And for those who know me a lot, I like to merge impact and money in one, in one sentence. I believe that a complete human being should be able to create impact and in the process make some money because at a certain level, to make more impact, you need more money. Whether it's your money you're making or people are trusting you to give you money to make the impact, whatever way, you need money, right? So, and I'll keep teaching about influence. I am also learning about influence. I have benefited from a little bit of, of influence and, and attention in, in using it to build a real and, 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 and business, right? So um, it is critical that we get to understand that. One thing that happened, I shared in the, in the community, it has never happened to me that much, um, which was the birthday gift. I have... I used to receive birthday gifts, you know, financial gifts, sometimes shoes and sometimes ties, sometimes shirts and all of that. I used to receive birthday gifts from people. But this birthday that recently passed two days ago, I received financial gifts almost half a million, more than half a million, almost 700,000 francs. If, and if I want to add gifts in dollars from other countries to France, almost close to a million in financial gift. Now, there are a lot of dynamics that it, it's not about the money, right? It's not about the money. Money, money is just a byproduct. But the question is, how do you generate that byproduct? You get the question. Money is, is important, but you don't get to do things because of money alone. But there is a way you can do certain things that that byproduct, you naturally attract the byproduct, right? And among many other things in that process that I, as many of you know me, when something works, I like to break it down. What made it work? How did I get here? How did this person produce this kind of result? I start seeking and asking questions to understand deeper and better so I can replicate and do it, or I can improve it and do it better and get better results. Okay? So in all of that, one of the major things that I picked out was the opportunity and the privilege that God has given me to be able to be in a place where I can influence people to be better, career-wise, business-wise, and, 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 and spiritually, 
as, as a minister of God in different areas, right? And that is why that gets to happen from people that I know and from people that I've never met before, people I've never spoken with before, you see. And, and if you trans, this happen in terms of impact and, and love and all of that. But if you transition the same model into career and business, you can still use it to advance your career and business. There is a way you can build influence that you will never be in the job market. There's a way if you're a university student, you can start building influence that before you graduate, you will have good job offers from other companies. As an entrepreneur, there's a way you can build influence that your company will never lack customers because of the influence that you command. Whatever you endorse or talk about in public attract leads and you can convert those leads into paying customers. You see? So if there's one thing you need to keep on studying and one thing I keep studying is understanding the art and the science of building influence because it's an asset. Recently, I've been saying that um, for those who understand business terms, if, if, if in, in a balance sheet, balance sheet has assets and liabilities. Assets are where you put things that make money. Assets, when you go under assets, you see things like land, goodwill, cash at bank, cash in hand, stock, all of those kind of things. And I've started saying recently that when they put land, go and put influence, go and put attention. Because, for example, Current assets are those assets that you can quickly convert into cash. And when you truly have influence, you can quickly convert influence into cash. You can quickly monetize influence, right? If you have 100,000 people following you on social media platforms, you launch a new product, you are different from somebody who is launching a product to look for a market. You have a ready market that you are influencing. Hey guys, this is my new product. All you need to do is get it here. And before you know it, it's sold out because of the influence that you have over the people. Right? Yeah, so these are things that as you begin to grow in your career and your business, you need to understand that. And one thing I keep I, I keep saying is that one of the fastest in, in, in the years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years ago, one of the best ways to rise and beat poverty if you're coming from the village of a poor background was maybe good education and you're intelligent and maybe you, you, you get scholarships and you get into a school and you can help your family out of poverty or you have an uncle somewhere or somebody sees you and likes you and help you and all of that. Now, one of the ways to beat poverty is to add influence, add your ability to build influence. Uh, that's why I always say it's funny, and that's the truth, that I cannot write my success story without talking about social media because I don't have any rich parent, rich uncle, rich auntie anywhere. I don't have any rich person or popular person that endorsed me uh, um, anywhere before I got to where I am. I've traveled 20 countries plus, not because I know people. 99% of these people saw me on social media and they invited me. From a tattered view, from a small town, from a small village. You, you get you get the difference? So it was influence that I was able to build through leveraging the work I do, maybe telling stories, sharing the concepts, sharing the things I do, plus social media platforms, various dynamics. And that's the power of understanding how to use resources. You will not be able to build influence if you cannot use the resources that are available to you. There are many of you that Facebook is available to you. Your phone is a resource. The data you have is a resource. The internet is a resource. The electricity is a resource. Your brain is a resource. Your ability to read and write is a resource. There are a lot of resources around us. The challenge is many people don't know how to mobilize that re those resources and locate it accordingly and begin to execute them for the greater good. 
they quickly just consider the challenges around them. And when you are thinking on the challenges and negativity, it covers your ability to see the resources. That's why I don't like negative thinking. That's why I don't like complaining around me. I don't like a lot of, you know, those kind of negative stuff because they quickly cover possibilities around you. Right? Are you being challenged? Are you being blessed? Are you learning something? Come on, give me feedback in the chat box. Are you learning something? Are you being challenged? Good, 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 good. Now, so how do you build influence? I wanted to share thoughts on, on from, from this book that was written by Robert um, Cialdini. And he's a behavioral scientist, a social scientist specializing in influence. And he wrote a book on influence. And in that book, he identified six key principles that you can use to, to persuade people or to influence them. And I want to talk on those principles and then we'll run up after that introduction. The first principle you talk about is liking, right? If you are likable, people are more likely to agree with you. If you are likable, people are more likely to agree with you. It is easier to influence people if you are likable. If you are not likable, you will not be able to influence people. So in your job site, your business, like for example, in a business place, if you don't have a likable facial expression, attitude, you cannot influence your customers. You see, and, and that's why if you have ever attended any customer service training, they talk a lot about your smiles because one of the things that makes you likable is your facial expression and how you smile. You get the concept? So the first principle of this, according to Robert, is you need to train yourself to be likable. I was talking to one lady and she said, that's just, that's just how I am. You can't just move around getting angry and looking as if you're going to beat somebody and expect people to like you. Nobody's going to do that nonsense. You can train and outgrow certain characteristics. That's why I hate the statement that that's who I am, that, that's how I am. No, nobody is like that, except something that is a, um, is a physical disability. But as long as it's mentally, emotionally, attitude-wise, anybody can improve that. There's nothing like that's how I am. It's just laziness. It's just ignorance. It's just lack of, of understanding of what they are gain, what they are going to get in order to, when they change to do that. So if if there are things that you know that you have around you that don't make you likable, you need to start working on it. There are some people that people would not like to help them. Because the way they communicate when they are help is not likable. Somebody will do something for you, something very amazing, and you will just write thank you or thanks. No, you need to intentionally train yourself to speak in a way that somebody will like you. Right? In a way that somebody will feel and, and it's intentionality. Like I was talking about the birthday gift. There were people that sent me a thousand francs, one five, two thousand francs, five dollars, ten dollars. But the same way that I appreciate people that sent me a hundred thousand francs is the same way I appreciated people that sent me a thousand francs. Oh my goodness, you found me so worthy that you can celebrate me and honor me with a seat. Thank you so much. God bless you. Right? It's intentional. The way you communicate, the way you approach people or when people are approaching you, you need to make sure you're likable. And not just from the place of pretense, but from the place of internal transformation. You understand? So that's the first principle of that. Number two, he spoke about reciprocity. Reciprocity. Helping people means they are likable to return the favor. They say, well, you do things to people and on, on a normal sense, they will likely reciprocate what you did. There's a principle I have. 
And I'll share with you guys. This is the principle I have. I have a principle in my life that I either I show up for my friends physically or I show up for them financially. Either I show up myself or my money will show up. It's the principle that I have. If you are my friend and you are celebrating something, we are going through something, if I am not there with you physically, I will send a gift. I will send fine. I will do something. I must show up for you. It's a secret. It's a secret. You cannot influence, you cannot expect people to, um, how do I say this? You cannot expect people to stand up for you when you don't stand up for them. You cannot expect to influence people when you don't show up for them. So there is this principle of reciprocity. Helping people means they are likely to return the favor. You see, even before people ever started giving me birthday gift, I have the tradition of always some, some celebrating a birthday, I just send a gift to the person. 5,000, 10,000, whatever. Just send a gift, please, just to honor you on your birthday. Not because I'm doing something in return, I, I'm expecting something because it's just an, an, an attitude, a desire, a way of, you know, understanding that there's a way that you can plant a seed uh, in the lives of people. You see, it's the same like even knowledge. It's the same like this. This teaching is not paid. Basically, it's not paid. There are many, the people that send me birthday gifts have invested in their lives freely giving. Those who paid, did paid stuff, those who are there because, who came across because of the free knowledge I share on social media and YouTube and, and here and there, that is it. So when you invest into people, you in-depth people, many of them who understand the power of honor and, and, and service, they always feel like they owe you something. Not because you are forcing them to owe you something, but because it's just the, how you have served them and how you have invested in their lives. You see, it must not just be money. There are many ways, many ways. I have many friends and clients that are richer than me 1,000 times. My, one, my 100,000 friends means nothing to them. But it doesn't mean that I cannot make them feel special. I find different ways that I can serve them and be of value to them. You see? So if you're going to build influence, you need to understand the principle of reciprocity. That helping people means they are likely to return their favor. But the secret here is be of service, be a servant leader as much as you can. The third principle that he shared in this book is called social proof. People model to the actions of others if they relate to them. Social proof. For example, this is where testimonials come in. Like when you go to website to see people, websites to put testimonials of what other customers are saying about their product, it's called social proof. Or, um, you are selling a course. I, I used to use that a lot. When so, what if let's say I'm selling a program, when people pay for tickets to attend the program, I always take screenshot of the tickets payment or the messaging, and I post on social media. People like to do things they see other people doing, so it's a powerful way to influence people. So if you can be able to build a lot of social proof around the work you do around the things that you do, it, it helps a lot. Let, let me take a, a more funny um, example. A, example, relationships, right? Sometimes a girl can be rejecting you as a boy, as a gentleman, and when they see you going out with another girl, they start getting jealous, right? Meanwhile, they already said they don't want to date you, <laughs> right? You get the concept, vice versa, same for, for ladies and do that. And you get to see a boy asking a lady out who is a friend of the other lady that he wants just to influence the other lady psychologically. They are using the game of social proof, right? So 
it, it is the same in influence. Um, another way of social proof that has worked recently with the coming of social media is taking pictures with influential and successful people in your industry or showing proof that you have a relationship with somebody who is relevant in your industry. For example, there's a, um, um, there are many people that post pictures of selfies with me during my birthday and people are like, oh, let me this person was asking if I know you, if I, right? Oh, for example, or oh, one of my mentees one time I had a call with him and he did a screenshot of that call that we spoke for about 15 or 20 minutes and then posted on his status that, oh, I had a call with my mentor and all of that. And then somebody said, what? You have Jabet's number. You, are, you know Jabet so way that you guys talk on calls, right? So it's social proof. The people that you relate with can build your influence. That is why industry events are good because the places that you go industry related you get the point the places go that are industry related contribute to your influence in that industry that's why don't be so calm you see it, it should be sad if you stay for a month and you have not attended an industry conference online or or, 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 or off-site because as long as you're quiet as long as there's nothing that is making some sense around you, your influence remains the same. Your influence remains stagnant. It's not growing. You get the concept? Yeah, so that's where social proof comes in. So if you run a business, um, the more that you can collect you know, feedback that people are saying about your product, your service, and you can put on your website or on social media, of course, protecting their personal data, or just using their name with their permission and their picture with their permission, fine. Okay, uh, um, um, do that. It, it 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 is very important because social proof helps you to build um, that powerful influence, right? I want to give another example that is keeping my mind. Some I'll remember hopefully, right? Good. So that's the third principle he shared. Are you learning something? I hope you are learning something. Number four, the fourth principle. The fourth principle, commitment and consistency. This is the challenge for many people. Commitment and consistency. He said that remind people of their commitment to do what they said they will do, right? And if you are going to build influence, many people are joining this session late. We don't really understand what I'm talking about, but when I share the link in the group, please go through so you understand this. Influence becoming one of the most powerful assets and currencies. One of the things that is making it difficult for people to build influence is commitment and consistency in the activities that can help them build that influence. There is the rule, the 10,000 hour rule, I've taught it here many times, where it is recognized that if you are going to be a spot at something, you must do the same thing consistently for 10,000 hours. And if you break down 10,000 hours for an average performer, that's about seven years. And the truth about influence is, you don't build influence overnight. Influence that is powerful, is monetizable and can create significant impact. You don't build it overnight. It's going to take a couple of years. So the more you procrastinate your dedication, commitment, and consistency to the activities that will, you will need to build your influence, the more you are procrastinating the ability to build one of your most important assets. You see? So, if you're, going to, if you're going to build influence, you need to be committed and be consistent in the activities, in the value creating activities that will have the highest impact in building your influence. For example, you cannot build significant influence if you don't command 
a certain level of expertise in your industry. So reading books, reading articles, studying, and making sure that you upgrade yourself to know a lot about your industry is hard. Yeah. It's hard reading for three hours, four hours every day, two hours, one hour every day when you have an examination, because many of us are motivated by examination, right? And the flesh is designed to love to be on social media, watch television, hang out with friends and all of that. But if you are going to build this asset, you need to be consistent at when it comes to those high value activities that will have a direct impact on your ability to build influence. So if you, if you need to grow your mental intelligence, you need to be consistent at doing it for seven years and above consistently. You see, if showing up on the media, social media, for example, is what you need to do, do it. And for example, showing up now becomes a challenge. I just finished an article now on internal resources. Uh, I think I'll share in the afternoon tomorrow. I'll share in the afternoon. And I was saying that many people are still failures in their careers and businesses because they have not dig deep to unearth their internal resources, like purpose, passion, energy, unique genius, intelligence, all of those things. So they are desiring to create outward influence, but they have not built the internal resources that can help them to create that outward influence. Like I was talking about media. There are many people on media that are posting nonsense, right? There's a gentleman that, like many of them, those are that, that, that can, I see them as friends and, they, and I see that they, they, they will respond. Many of them will just reach out inbox and say, what you post that doesn't make sense. When I was talking to you yesterday and I said, look, if you want to remain a local champion, post the things that you are posting. But if you want to go far and build a brand that will stand the test of time, this is what you should be doing. So many people are in a haste to be on media, but they, are, they have not invested the time to be consistent in working on the internal resources that they need to be able to influence their outer world. So we are in a generation of think of an idea, go on social media. But that's why many of them get to make noise on social media for year in, year out, and they don't get to create the significant impact and make the income like some people. Then they begin to wonder, so what, what are they doing that I'm not doing? What is Joy by doing I'm not doing? What is, right? Meanwhile, there is a big gap that they are missing out. So as we all are growing in our careers and our businesses, we need to be consistent first in building our internal resources, right? Make sure that you're convicted about your purpose, your passion, you're working on your mental intelligence, you're working on your attitude, character, expertise, all of these things, skill set, information acquisition, all of these things, you're working on them. And you need to be consistent on them. Remember that's the fourth principle of building influence, commitment, is it a fault? Yes. Commitment and consistency. If you if you do every other thing and take this out, you you are going to fail. You are going to struggle. Yeah. Right. Good. And and like we, we started the session during the chit chat, and I was talking about the peak performance habits, and I was, I was asking uh, how many of you are still waking up at three thirty a.m., four a.m. to just read for for one hour for two hours. And I was saying that if you're in PPA in this community, one of our rules is read one book a month at least. And many of you are saying that you have been inconsistent, right? And when you are inconsistent, one of the major outcomes of being inconsistent is that you procrastinate your manifestation. Because what you need to achieve in one year of doing the right things every day for one year, for it to happen after one year, if you're doing, if, if you take what you had to do in one year and you do it in five years, you manifest in five years. That's the sad thing about it. That's the sad thing about it. But people don't see it that way. If you are supposed to read 
12 books in a year that are supposed to build your mental capacity so you can create value that will attract things. And instead of reading 12 books in one year, you now read 12 books in five years. Your mind will be dumb and ignorant and below capacity. And when you open your mouth to talk, nobody will listen to you and you cannot influence anybody. You see the, you see the challenge of inconsistency? Good. So you need to work on that and make sure that you marry that to what you're doing. The next thing is authority. He spoke about authority. You are going to build influence. You need to understand influence and authority. And, and because authority is very important, right? If you are truly influential and you're going to make good use of your influence, you need to have authority. You can have power without authority. You can have power without authority. For example, if I give you a million francs to keep as a trusted friend, you have power over that one million francs, but you don't have the authority to use one million francs. That's the difference. So there are many people, like I always fondly describe that there's a difference between branding and hyping or marketing and hyping. Hyping is when you're making noise around something that you're not good at. That's hyping, you're just making noise. But marketing and branding is when you are truly marketing and branding something that you're truly good at, something you truly have authority in. You know, author, like a book author, authority. That's why one of the ways, one of the elements to have authority in a field is to have a book, author a book, right? Yeah. So if you are going to have influence over people, you need to have authority. Authority that when you speak, people can listen. Command authority in an industry, in a sector, in the country, in an area, whatever that you're doing, you need to do, and one of the best ways to command authority is to produce results. Results, you see, there are many speakers. A speaker can be fluent and read a book and teach very well. But a speaker who has created results about what they're talking about will come and talk with authority. I always, say, I always say something fun, you know? I can write the best quotes. I can write quotes, very good quotes. But Dangute can post a very lame quote and just say, in the journey of success, hard work is critical. That post is going to have maybe a million likes and a million comments. But if I do the same post, it may not have up to 100 likes or 100 comments. You know the difference? He's not just talking. There is an authority backing him. There is a level of result that he has created over time that is stuck in the minds of people that he has authority over them. So you are truly going to build influence. You need to have authority in that area. That's why don't be excited about just making noise. Make sure that you're also producing results. We have a lot of business coaches here and there, marketing coaches, this and that, all of that, all of that. Good. You, you have sense, right? Like I always say, if you claim you have sense, use the sense that you have and produce results for yourself. It's even going to make it easier for you to market your sense. For those who are not Cameroonians, talking about knowledge and wisdom, right? So it's very important. So as, as you begin to seek, as you begin to build, you need to be conscious at you know, producing results that can give you authority. Um, somebody was saying that um, you saw somebody selling books on, in the streets of Lagos, a book on how to be rich but the guy was selling the books under the sun. So the guy was like, you don't look rich. 
why can't you buy the book and read and be rich? Then the guy said, I'll buy the book for you to read and become rich. Right? Authority. He had the product, but he didn't have the authority to sell that particular product. So he cannot influence people to even buy because there's no authority. He can talk to sell. He can present to sell, but there's no authority to influence people to pay for it. You see? And at some point, people package authority. This same guy about the book. I was just thinking that if I'm the one in the shoes and I'm desperate at selling that book, I can decide and say, you know what? I'm going to borrow a suit, borrow a shoe, borrow a car, and I'm going to drive and go only to big, big offices and story buildings, dress well, have a briefcase, put the books in the briefcase, move from office to office to sell the books. Somebody will look at me like that and trust to buy the book. You can package credibility. It's dangerous that you are faking it to make it. When you, when you will be discovered, it can hurt your brand for a very long time. That's the danger of that. But people fake it and make it. It's a strategy. Fake it till you make it. It's a whole strategy. There are books on that. But it's, it's dangerous to a certain extent, right? It, it's fake it till you make it. It always works very well if you have a lot of money to finance the fake until you truly start making it, right? Yeah, so... Make sure that you are doing that. The next thing is scarcity. He spoke about scarcity. Create a sense of urgency or a feeling of scarcity. So if you are going to build influence, you can create scarcity. You can find a way to make some things scarce about you. Sometimes you can just maybe make your presence to be scarce, right? When you, have, you, have been, you do things, do things to a certain level, you can decide to just disappear from the, from the scene. But you have created powerful value and people are always looking for you. You can disappear for weeks or a month or so with no word. And then you come back again. People use this a lot. If you have somebody who study influential people, they use this a lot, right? Or... People use this when they're selling stuff. You're selling like a product. You can create urgency around that product. You can say, on the 10 pieces we have produced and five have been pre-ordered, on the five are left. That urgency can influence the thoughts of people. There are many car companies that they use scarcity model a lot, like um, um, Lamborghinis, um, I'm forgetting the name of these cars, but they can conceptualize a model and make that model and, and now announce that they are going to make only 10 of those cars around the world, only 10. So they make it very scarce. And only 10 people will have the cars around the world. Then they sell it very expensive. They now influence the rich people, people who love to be exclusive, who want to be the only 10 people around the world who have that particular car. People do the companies who produce watches and cars do that a lot. Right? So these are some models that you can use to build um, some, some, some influence. This, I, I was trying to crisscross around using it in, in a business, in personal life and career and all of that. But I hope that it made some sense. And again, as I said, as we begin, as, as we are building, there's something I've been doing intentionally since 2017, really studying about attention and influence because by discernment or revelation or whatever, I discovered that in the next 30, 40, 50 years, influence and attention will become some of the most powerful currencies in the world. And that is already happening. That's why you see comedians who are just making people laugh. 
They are multi-millionaires. Attention. They have learned how to create value, get people's attention, have millions of followers, thousands of followers. They now monetize that attention. You see that? And it's only going to grow. It's only going to be like that. So the more you study about it, understand how to fit it. It's not about where you are. Whether you are in a small town right now listening to me, you're in a small country, big country, wherever you are, this is inevitable. So the earlier you start learning about this and being intentional about this, many, many of you are lucky that some of you are started talking about this since last year. And if you were serious and you listen to act and listen to think deeply, you should have been a step ahead more than many people in, in, in your community or even in, in the country, right? Your questions, then we'll round up. You have a question, raise up your hand. I can unmute you, ask a question, or you text. Ask a question. If you don't ask a question, please don't come to my WhatsApp and ask me a question. Ask it here. Let us sort it out now. Right. Yes, Mr. Summer, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for the class. It was very, very inspiring. Building influence. Yeah, I just want to find out from you. In the case of building influence in a community whereby there's a lot of critic and pe uh, people who choose to be very jealous of you, they want to create another narrative of you. How do you overcome that? Not your business. That will always happen. That is a fact. It will always happen. If I tell you my stories of people who told me that um, this thing doesn't work in camera, it will never work, or you're showing this, you're showing that, all of that. Your job is to be authentic. Your job is to be convicted at the path you have chosen. That's your responsibility. At the beginning, many people will not understand you, and that's where consistency is important. There are many people that are understanding me now, like maybe childhood friends and even family members. 12 years after, 18 years after, 10 years after. You understand? But because influence puts you on the spotlight, as long as you are on the spotlight, people will throw things at you. That is natural. And what people don't understand, they talk about it or they try to dispute it. They try to just say things that they don't understand about it. Your job is stay convicted, stay authentic, stay transparent, do your thing and pursue. Because what you saw or what you're convicted about they are not convicted about it. And that's why you must, when you're not, from this level, you're not bothered about people's opinions. Don't copy. The challenge is many people convert opinions into facts. Many people hear things and overthink about it, and it even becomes real in their own mind. That's the challenge. So you need to learn how to hear some things and just, it, it stays there. It never, it, 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 like I always say, there are some things that when you hear them, they should not enter your mind and they should not enter your heart. Train yourself, let them just bounce off and go back. Focus on important things. Because as long as you have clarity and your heart is peace, you will go very far, right? Awesome. Yes, Brenda, go ahead. Good morning, Doc. Thank you for the class today. I I just have a worry concerning the social media platforms. Like for example, I want to post something on LinkedIn. I'll feel more free or like uh, easy to express what I have to share. But on Facebook, it's like. There are people who will come and they will not even understand what you post. They will just be bashing at you and all the like. How can we do to make sure that we leverage on all these social media platforms and also create that content that uh, will have our identity 
without uh, being different, like my Facebook will not have a different picture of my LinkedIn. Well, That's first of all, your, your Facebook has to be different from your LinkedIn. Okay. Get to me. You can have the same content on Facebook, except the content is very professional and you can post on Facebook. LinkedIn is purely professional. That's why people on LinkedIn can they argue carelessly because they are professionals. Facebook is like a family compound. You have classmates, age mates, quarter mates, village people following you. And everybody from Tom and Jerry is on Facebook. But LinkedIn, there are many people you have on Facebook that are not on LinkedIn. Is that true? Yeah. Good. So, so that is it. So there are some content that you can tell her to feed to LinkedIn and you can retell her to feed Facebook. It's called, it's, it's called content repurposing. You repurpose content to feed the various platforms. It can be the same message, the same the same, yeah, the same message, but the concept and the way it is delivered is different. And then secondly, people will always bash you. And at the beginning, people will bash when I started, people used to bash me. But they say, where will you build influence and authority now? Or they may realize that, oh, this guy was, this lady was actually speaking the truth. But years later. So don't even, that's why there's a hide button. Somebody comment now says, go and delete it or you hide it. You must not allow it there. So it's not even a, a, a point of concern. You understand? So because it's something within your control. Your job is to keep sharing again, as long as you know that what you're sharing makes sense, you're convicted about it, it's industry-related, industry standard, whatever, and you're not expected to be perfect. Nobody has all the body of knowledge, nobody. You will make mistakes, you will make grammatical errors, sentence structures, you post inaccurate data and statistics, that is okay correct it and move forward. So to me, the challenge here is you, not the people. I'm, I, if you ask, you ask me, who should I blame? The people or you, I'll blame you. Okay. Are you getting to me? Because you are yes. taking their, their, their opinions to make it your reality or to control your actions, which that is not the case. So repurpose your content, let it fit LinkedIn's professional standards and let it fit the way people on Facebook can understand. And those who don't understand is cool. You can block them from seeing your content. They must not see your content if you want. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, Claudine. Good morning, sir. Thank you for the session. Uh, my question is, what can somebody who doesn't have product or services they offer or for the sale, how can they build influence? For example, an employee who is uh, who doesn't necessarily have a product or a service, how can they build influence? Do they just need to share their uh, ideologies or how can they also build influence, influence on social media? There are many influential people who don't have companies or products or services. They are employees of a platform, right? So they represent the platform. Their passion, their purpose can be working for it. Everybody will never be a CEO. If all of us start a business today, how many of us are here? Let me see. 19, all of us. Probably only, only two will succeed, 17 will fail. People are just excited about businesses. Anyway, they'll never even take time to study and understand to build structures and all of that. It's just excitement. Oh, since this man is a CEO and he's making a want to be a CEO. You understand? Many people are just excited about starting businesses. But we we'll have we'll always have more employees than founders. First of all, it's very hard to be a successful founder and more easier to be an employee. So there are many influential public speakers, consultants who are who have built their influence under Facebook, under Microsoft, under Google. I know many of them, millions of them who have done that. We have developed influence working for the government, United Nations, World Bank, many of them. The point is, if you, if you cannot build influence around what you have created, build influence around what somebody else has created. Because you need value, you need a platform to build that influence. 
Okay, so and the employee use the company where they work and build their influence because that employee is also a professional in the industry, and the company where they work in is in the industry where they are passionate about. So if you read accounting and you work as an accountant in a company, build influence around an accounting professional in the corporate world working for a company, and you can be an accounting consultant someday if you want to, right? Good. Um, yes, Ms. Pa, go ahead. Thank you so much, Doctor, for this opportunity. Listening to you is always so great. I'm so inspired and I'm going to do more. I don't want to talk about the points that I was touched. There are so many and I'll work on them, getting to be consistent in what I'm doing. But my question is a bit personal. I don't want to bug you a lot inbox that I'll just ask you. Someone might learn. Hello, doctor. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. My my dad on Sunday, he I'll I'll just go personal so that you understand better. On Sunday, my dad sent me a message very early in the morning when I was going to church that I should take it seriously that he has a friend in Canada and he said he has a daughter that has a master's degree in English and he's already he has already given he said okay. Then work. Okay, do you have a passport? I said, my passport is expired, but I can renew that. So my, he just carried away with the child, and I'm already working and building the startup coming. And now, I just think that I'm going to church that when I come back. Thank you very much. But when I come back, I'm going to reply. But since I came back from church yesterday, I haven't replied up to now. I just sent him a message and think that I'm still praying and thinking about it. So I really don't know how to reply to him, given that I don't think I can. If I travel now, how am I going to build this company? And I don't want him to feel like, but I'm big. How should this African fathers? I don't know how <laughs> it is well. So I really want to handle it in a way that it will not hurt him and my mom. No, no, it's how it's, do I it's, go about it's, it? it's it's just a, it's just an issue of communication, right? A good parent will always focus on pushing the daughters and the sons into opportunities. Every good parent will do that. That's normal. Now, very few parents understand certain dynamics when it comes to building a business because many parents grew up in the culture or in the economy where people who are making it either have a good job with a government international agency or they are abroad. That's, that's what they think. But very few parents know that you can start a business and for the first five years or 10 years of that business, you are making just 50,000 francs every month as, as, as money. But after 20 years, that same business can make you 20 million a month. Very few parents think like that. Very few think like that. Even most of you, very few think like that. But if you leave Cameroon and go to Canada, Europe, anywhere, and you, the only difference is that you're making money times three what you're making in Cameroon. But after 10 years, 20 years, you only retire with salary and retirement benefits. But people, people who are building businesses, the, the more time they build, the more they're building wealth. So it's like when you're, when you're starting, when you're starting your early days, you're going to get paid 50K, even no pace for months. But the more you stay in that business, the more the business swells. After 15 years, that same business can give you 5 million, 10 million. But that employee, either who went to Canada, to the US, the highest they can make is just a salary. You get a difference. But very few people think in that dynamics. And very few people understand that you can be uncomfortable for five, 10 years and produce double, triple for the next 30 years of your life as a business person. So the challenge here is communication. The challenge here is 
making your dad or your parents know that you know what you're doing is the same, you know, to a certain extent. When I resigned from my job to start training and speaking, it was not a good thing for the family because they thought that having a job in the microfinance was a big thing at that time, right? But I didn't see it that way. Maybe mine was was a more wrong and I didn't care what they what, what they thought, right? So, however, it's just the issue of communication and the issue of making your dad and your family know you know what you're doing and you are taking your decision and you are ready for the consequences. And you're, ready, you're ready to take the, the responsibilities um, to make it work. It's, he is just speaking from the place of his own level of knowledge and his own level of, 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 of revelation, thinking that you're only going to make it if you are in Canada, you're in the United States, you're in Europe, etc. Right? So it's just communication. The, the most important thing here is what are you convicted about? What do you believe that you can do? What do you believe that is your path to you living your happiest, more fulfilled, significant life even before the money? Because there are certain things that when you do right, the money will naturally come into place. You see? So just communicate and, and, and make it known. And, and I think this communication is important to happen so that you, you, you are able to cut off future same communication. <laughs> you understand? Yes, because many people have not had this kind of communication. So anytime their parents see an opportunity, they will still be calling them. Oh, this one has come here, come and do this, come and do this. But somebody like me, when I picked my path, said nobody should advise me. If, it's my, if I mess up, I'm, with, I'm ready for it. Don't tell me what to do again. I'm cool with it. It all depends, but just have an information awareness communication with your parents in a respectful and humble way. Make them understand, right? All right, that is it. We have passed the time for I'm seeing a lot of. Let me see if there's a question in the chat box. Okay. Right. Um, what can you do when trying to create good content and someone come directly to you telling you to live the life you are preaching before writing content, especially writing about finances? Yeah, this is what I was talking about, right? We spoke about this earlier. Authority and credibility is very important. So um, that's why there are certain things that Let's say you're talking about finances, maybe you can start and focus on teaching people on how to make money because finances is broad. If you start talking about making financial abundance and millions and this and all of that, meanwhile, they see that you're, you're struggling financially. It, it's, you are going to talk, but you will not influence anybody. As I said, result gives authority and anybody with authority can influence somebody to make decisions. There are many people that can write on social media, but not everybody has a following that commands credibility. But when you start posting results, when you start living, without seeing the life that you're talking about, it becomes different, right? So the challenge here is that people want to go into content creation and coaching, they overstep their bounds. So people begin to see them like clowns. Right, people will know you. They're like, but I know this man. He can barely look good. He can barely pay his house rent. So how is he talking about millionaire and all of that? So there are certain thoughts that they are okay with you for your for, for your positive thinking, for your dreaming, for your vision. But you can decide and start from what you have conquered. That's what I always recommend. Start with what you have conquered it makes it easier for people to trust you and see you grow. This is one thing I learned early on when I started doing. I never used to talk about things I've not really done. 
it makes it easier for people to trust you. Okay, so if you're passionate about finances and your life does not reflect the financial content you're creating, focus on what have you conquered that if you talk about it online, somebody comes offline, they see you manifesting it. You will influence them better than talking big talk when it is not reflecting in your life. You get a difference? That's one of the things that separates the most successful speakers, consultants, trainers, and coaches. Some have produced results and some have just read books and can talk good grammar. And can be very fluent, but that is not enough. That's not enough. People need more. What have you done? Tell us, tell us what you have done. Joy, but we want to invite you, but tell us, tell us your story. I've had that many times. The university wants to host me in the United States for over a week to lecture some of their students and, and all of that. But I had to have a meeting with the lecturers. What have you produced? What have you achieved? If our business school is hosting you, tell us what have you done in business, in the business world? What have you created? You get a difference? Yes. So, in the Cameroon setting, Nigeria, it happens a lot. Very excited young people. Big talk, but nothing on ground. So faking it till they make it is dangerous because people that like you have comments like that, that you preach what you're doing or you live the life that you're talking about. So you can start from what you have conquered. For example, if you have a small job and you're making money from it, you can start teaching people on the art of starting small and growing later. That's a, that topic alone is enough for you to create content in diverse areas. Content on resilience, starting small, determination, courage, savings, budgeting. You see, a lot of topics. I want to challenge also is that many people want to look at what other people are creating content about. They don't want to create content in that same area. Me, I will create content from what I'm experiencing on a daily basis. If you want to create content like me, you're going to struggle because content is reality. It's not fake. Although people fake it, but true content that changes lives and go viral is reality, real stuff that people can see and vet. And, 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 and resonate with it. Okay, good. I hope that makes some sense. We can never exhaust the um, topic of influence and attention. Okay. All right, everybody. That was it for today's session. Um, I'm happy that we could catch up for the morning school with the Peak Performance Academy. And I'm hoping that we are going to have more of our morning schools. Um, I'm getting less busy um, before I get busy again. So uh, depends. But I hope that we learned a couple of stuff today. And go, go implement, please. Remember, as I always emphasize, anytime you're in a session like this, or anytime you are going through a session and somebody else is teaching, in your mind, always have two battling concepts in your mind. Number one, what will I stop doing because of what I have learned? And number two, what will I start doing because of what I have learned? That's how you're going to progress. Hearing and hearing. I always say, if you have been under me for more than 12 months and your life is not changing career-wise, financially, impact-wise, I don't think I, I don't think you're a good mentee. Right, it means you are not when you hear, you don't go stop certain things, and when you hear, you don't go start certain things. So, we'll need to see how we can put you in one room and whip you very well so you can repent. All right, people, let's stay connected in the WhatsApp group and uh, take care, guys. Cheers. <laughs>